Hey guys, ATF here, and I'm here to do the A part of my Q&A video. I posted that uh, now about a week and a half ago, maybe about two weeks. Um, and yeah, I was waiting a couple extra days to see if I got any extra comments, but I did not. Um, so let's just go through what I have here. Let me explain. Uh, one thing first, as you can tell, I'm doing a whole screen recording, and then you can see me up here in the corner as well. Um, so you can follow along on the left side, and then if you want to, you can see my um, beautiful face and reaction over to the right side. So that's what we have going on, all right? Um, now, let me explain something before we get started here. Because this probably will be a long video, and I'm just going to make it one chunk, so maybe it's 20 minutes, maybe longer. What I will do in the description down below, I will have the times and the questions, all right? So you can fast forward to the questions you want, all right? So just to make it easy watching. So we'll start from the bottom up. Um, I thought there's one other thing I was going to say. I guess not. Side note, if you did not see my original Q&A video and you'd like to leave me a question, feel free to leave it down below and I'll answer it in a comment, all right? So I'm not going to make a separate video for you guys, but I will certainly leave a comment and I'll reply. All right, back to the video. All right, so let's get started. All right, and question one comes from Hunter Ringo, who says down there at the bottom, if I won the Powerball, what would I do and how will I imagine life moving forward? Well, for one, I would, assuming it was the Powerball that was just one, we'll use that one as an example, um, you know, the billion dollar one. Let's just say I took home a quarter, quarter billion or whatever, 250 million. Let's just say that. Uh, I'm not going to go through precise numbers, but I would give a lot to family, um, probably even down to, you know, cousins and stuff. Um, but, you know, it's my money, so I don't have to give it to everybody. But, you know, I would I'd probably help a lot of people out. Um, and even like my step relatives, you know, I've known them for 20 some odd years, even though I don't see them all the time. I would probably help them out as well. So basically, in one word, family. Um, and then I would go on vacation, um, maybe not all at once, but I would go to places I've always wanted to go, like Australia and Japan. Um, I have a weird obsession with wanting to see North Korea. Um, so I might try to do that if... Uh, you know, because it just, the, by the pictures, it looks like a modern day Nazi Germany. And I find Nazi Germany to be interesting. And uh, to kind of see something like that firsthand would be incredible. Maybe not necessarily in the good way, but, you know, incredible. So I would do that. Also, I would buy myself a house and a car, but I wouldn't go too crazy. Probably, you know just a you know decent sized house but with all the hookups nice car i don't know mercedes maybe uh, not like ferrari or anything too odd uh, or you know too out there is what i was thinking and then i would invest some of it you know probably in uh stuff like bonds but then also like physical tangible stuff like gold and silver um so yeah and yeah well i said bonds didn't i yeah um, so yeah, I would invest. So money to family, vacation, house, car, invest. And I would start off with getting a lawyer. Question two comes from Mr. Brad, who says, nice video idea. Thank you, buddy. He says, are you still considering an EMS career? I am. Um, I am. You know, what happened with that is I took the course back in 2013 and then at the end it's the national registry uh or in layman terms the big exam and you have a total of six chances to pass it uh the first three 
Um, I did not pass. The second time I vastly improved the first time, but I still didn't pass. And then you're, you can take kind of a refresher course. And then you can do the next three times. I didn't want to continue trying after the third time of failing because my thoughts were, this is EMS. You're taking care of people in some of their, maybe their worst time of their life. You know, maybe their lo- their leg just got ran over and now it's going to have to be amputated. That's a pretty dang sucky moment, you know. So if I'm an EMT or paramedic, you know, I don't want to be that guy who took three, four, five, six times to pass the exam. I want to know it on the first try maybe the second, third at the very least, you know, but you know, I want to know what I'm doing. And when I kind of saw that it wasn't something obviously wasn't getting through to me, I thought, yeah, I'm not going to keep going with this. I'm just going to let it go. Um, but it's, I, as I've been telling people who ask me about it, It's like that little ember still burning away in my head and hearts that, you know, I want to go back to and I kind of want to, you know, blow it into a fire. Um, But, you know, right now it's just kind of that little thing that's kind of burning away uh, and I'm not ignoring it. It's just there's other stuff I got to do. And, you know, so but am I still considering it? Ultimately, yes. All right, question number three comes from my buddy Dwayne over at XDM50. He says, if I could speak at a high school graduation and everybody would really listen to you. I don't know why those words are capitalized. What advice would you give to them? Feel free to make it in a separate video. I'm just going to include it right here. But I will say, I wouldn't, from my experience and what I would want to say, I would not want to say it at a high school graduation, but instead, even though it's kind of a lesser important moment, I would want to say it at like a um, junior high graduation Um, because, you know, I've made the mistakes and in high school and uh, those kind of pushed on to college. And so if I could talk to the people a little earlier, then I think maybe it would be a little more... um, maybe a little more meaningful. So I would say something to the extent of, these next next four four years years for you guys guys are going going to be incredibly incredibly important. important. You need to study study, study, and you need to study 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 hard hard, and you need to to learn learn good good habits, habits, not not just for studying, studying, but in, but general, in general, you need, you to, need learn to learn good habits. Good ha- I'm like looking at an audience that's not there. I don't know what I'm doing. And you need, and to, you need learn to learn good, good habits. Good habits. <laughs> Again, I continue with it. I don't know what I'm doing. Ultimately, Ultimately after, after high, high school, school, you, you can, can go, go wherever, wherever you, you want, want. And you can, and you pursue, can pursue whatever, whatever career, career you want. You want. Learn, learn from me. From me. Somebody, Somebody who did who not, not learn, learn good, good habits, habits. Not, not, not only, only just, just studying, studying habits, habits, but, 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 but many, many other habits. habits. I, did, I not did not take care, take care of those of habits, those habits and, and teach myself, myself better. better. If, I if I could go, I could back, go back in time, in time I, would I would tell myself, myself Andrew, Andrew, you need, you need to, focus to focus on the future, on the future. and you and are you too much in the moment. So I say that to you. Focus, Focus on your, on your future. future. Yeah, you yeah, still, you have, still high have high school and college, and college to, go, to through, go through, but, but do, not do not focus, focus on, on day to day, 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 every day. Every day. Focus, Focus on the on future, future. Because, because ultimately, ultimately you, are you are in charge of your, of your life, life, and if you, and screw, if you screw it up, it up now, now, you will be you will regretting, be regretting it, it when you are older, like myself. And scene. So that's what I would say. All right. You know, uh, really, I kind of screwed up in high school, didn't learn good studying habits. And so, well, that kind of pushed on to college and I didn't do so good there. Uh, You know, I 
in high school, I wanted to transfer to a couple different state colleges, Sacramento or San Francisco. I could have had my grades been a little better and had I taken the whole school thing more seriously, but I didn't. So I'm stuck here in good old Fresno. So yeah. And the next fourth question it looks like comes from Caleb Glozier who asks, what's my grail knife? Well, you might see down below there, right there, you see a few links. I'm gonna open those up and I'm gonna show you my grail knife. I couldn't limit it to just one, so I have three here. Um, actually, the bottom two are kind of like my grail, more along the lines of custom. This isn't really a custom, it's like, I don't know what it is, but it's a high-end production. This is the uh, the TAD or Triple Lot Design Dauntless MK4. There's also the MK1 and MK3. I'm not sure which one I would go for. Excuse me. They're all kind of awesome, as you see here. I just, I don't know what it is. I, I love the shape of the blade. Um, and, you know, I never really realized it until this knife. But I think I'm a sucker for a nice choil. I, 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 I don't know. I just, even though I maybe don't even use it that much, I just, I'm a sucker for a, for a good one. So there's that, the uh, Tad MK4. And then we have the, you probably not you guys, probably not a lot of you guys have heard of this one, but this is the Serge Panchenko Bean. Um, and as you saw there, the TAD goes for about 300, 350, depending on the model. And this one is like, a, it's really neat. Look up a video of it. It's, uh, it's like a slip joint. Um, and that's not, well, there it is. But, uh, and it just has this interesting little flipper thing you, you see here. Um, and it's just a sweet little knife. As you see down here, blade length only two inches overall, only five. Uh, just a neat little thing. I think Panchenko, I think he's Rush, no, Ukrainian, I believe. But just a sweet little knife. And, you know, I, I've realized only recently, like maybe in the past year, maybe two, that I'm just a small knife guy. I don't. I don't need, you know, like local knife guy here, Charlie Mike, you may know him on Blade Forms and whatnot. He loves the huge knives. Um, and that's him. But me, I kind of like the smaller stuff, you know. Uh, mainly probably because I don't use a knife incredibly often. So, you know, there's no need for uh, some ginormous pocket sword. And then more along the lines of just complete um, production, you know, at first, I really liked the uh, 804 right here. And then I kind of looked at this 909 right here. And I kind of like that guy. Um, the blade reminds me of the Griptilian with this, well, it has this little added uh, um, finger jimping ramp. Um, and it has the oversized pivot of the 0, 0620 and 630. Um, and of course has G10 scales, which easily could be modified to my liking because I'm not sure I really like them as they are. But it's just, man, it's a big guy. And it's what, seven and a half ounces? Yeah, so it, I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's a big one. So those are uh, just a few of my, um, what was the question? Grail knives, yes, grail knives, uh, Caleb. So yeah, there's there they are. All right, thank you for that question. And last but not least, we have Mr. Dwayne again, who asks another 10 questions. Oh, lordy. All right, so let's start with the top uh, and go down. So what are my goals for 2016? Again, I know we're probably already halfway through the video, but check down below and you'll see the times for all these questions. All right. Uh, what are your goals? Well, I have those written down here so I wouldn't forget. For one, I would like to find a second job. I will tell you what I do in the last question there. Um, second job, I would also like to find a uh, lady friend, uh, if you know what I mean. Um, 
and I would like to lose some more weight, get down to 200 or less, as well as at some point I would like to get to the gym five days a week. Now it's really funny because all of these um, I didn't just create right now. Uh, I actually, it was kind of like a New Year's resolution thing. Now I'm one of those people who, uh, you know, if if there's something big that I want to do and it's um, November seventeenth, like just do it. You know, there, why do I have to wait till the new year? But all of these things, I kind of all realized them like right at the very end of December, and I'm like, oh, let let's let's use this year to accomplish those things. So it's not that I necessarily need all of them right away uh, to get done. But um, at some point, <laughs> preferably start, you know, the first half of the year uh, working on those. Uh, and yeah, so those are a few of my goals. What collections do you have? I also wrote those down because I have quite a few. So kind of starting with the coolest and going down to the not so coolest, we have razors, as in like, old Gillette razors, uh, coins. I just took this one. I've been, I was carrying this one in my wallet for many, many, many months. This is an 1890 Morgan dollar. Um, minted in New Orleans. So it's, and I like it because it's exactly predates my existence by a hundred years. Born in 1990, born in 1890. So there you go. Only I wasn't born in New Orleans. All right, so I have coins. I have bottle openers, as I've shown in the video a while ago, but now I have over 200 bottle openers. I collect playing cards. I have approximately 75 different decks of cards. Well, actually, there's a few duplicates, but um, yeah. Um, I kind of collect books which kind of started, I guess, on accident because I would just ask for books for my birthday or Christmas that I wanted that maybe had to do with survival or just something I like. And then I started to just like get more. And then I would see an interesting um, book at the dollar store, which they actually do have a decent selection. And I would go, oh, yeah, OK, I know that author. I see him on television or whatever get that book and I have quite a few uh, in my armoire. I have them under my bed. I have them like everywhere. Um, <laughs> funny thing though, because I'm not a huge reader, but it's one of those things like, oh, well, I'll get to it sometime. So I also, these next two are kind of like, yeah. Um, shoe horns. Yep. Those things right here. <clears throat> Excuse my reach. Uh, I have one on my bed. These things assists in putting a shoe on yep I have probably close to 30 of these um, and I also collect staplers yep um, I don't have any here but uh, yeah staplers I have about 20 of those guys those last two I only started collecting them because I would go to estate sales a lot and I would see them shoehorns and staplers and it's like hey they're cheap you know they're they're it's an item that, you know, nobody cares about. So why not get it and start a collection? So I did. And now I have like 30 of these and 20 staplers. Interesting, right? Um, but there's a, a couple of pretty interesting, pretty cool looking staplers I have um, that you probably are not too familiar with. But uh, yeah, just like anything, I guess. There's the kind of boring version and then there's the cool ones. So um, I am considering making a video on those, the razors, coins, and bottle openers, and cards at least. The other three books, shoes, shoehorns, and staplers, probably not so much, but yeah, we'll see. All right, so anyways, there's the answer to that question. Do you have, still have airsoft guns? If so, can you show your collection um, yes, and yes, and I will be right back. All right, so actually after all these years, I'm actually down to only two guns. Um, at one time, I probably had six to eight. I mean, some of them 
cheaper than others and some of them better than others, but we're down to two. We have here, this is a, the mo is that, let me see. The model's on that side. The uh, Tang Folio Witness 1911, made by KWC. All right. I spray painted the handles at one point. They were kind of a nasty looking brown. So, decent little knife, oh, knife, gun, pew pew. Uh, of course, I would not do that with a real gun. I know what I'm doing here. It's a freaking play gun. There's no bullet or BBs in here. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nifty little gun. Shoots pretty hard. Pretty loud too in an enclosed area. But yeah, and it's easy to take apart too. Let's see if I can do that real quick. Boom, there you go. All of two seconds. Um, now if I can put it back together. Boom, there you go. So KWC Tang Folio with a bottle of lube. And we have this, I forget the exact model. It's the, uh, it's made by UTG though. This is their shot off, or actually not shot off, but pistol grip shotgun. I have a couple, I'll fast forward to the zip ties because uh, at one point I dropped this and the whole, I don't remember what part it was, the upper or lower part was kind of tilted. So I kind of had to like strap it all together so I wouldn't do that. Um, and yeah, apparently I did not have black zip ties at the moment. So hence that. And then I did a little crappy uh, zip tie mod up there for a sight. But anyways, nice gun. It's not even loaded. The magazine's going here. Um, and I, I love it. It's, it's it's a hefty little bastard. I would definitely buy this one again. Uh, safety is on. Now it's not. Pew, pew. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's a hard shooting mofo. Yeah, you do not want to be on the receiving end of this guy in the little skirmish because it hits hard. Um, and it's one that I, I, I don't loan out to my cousins or anybody when we do a little thing. It's like, nope, this is mine. This is all mine. Also have some Velcro on the sides that I added for like quick, you know, magazine. I, I, put, I put Velcro on the bottom of the magazine so I stick one right there. Eject the magazine, rip off the new one, stick it in there, put the old one on there, and yeah. So I, I'm I'm ready to go. It's a shotgun, but uh, it it moves pretty fast, man. So there we go. There's my two. Okay, favorite TV show and movie. I have a quick answer for you there. TV shows. It's tied. Seinfeld and The Office. Favorite movies. It's it's I would say it's a tie as well with Forrest Gump and 16 Candles. Yep, I only saw 16 Candles the first time less than two years ago, and I've probably seen it like, I kid you not, probably close to a dozen times. Love that movie, lots of good funny quotes. And uh, <laughs> just, that's what makes a show or a movie awesome to me, is it's just, you can you can replay it back, you can quote it, and it doesn't get old. So, um, what accomplishments are you most proud of? You know, this may sound kind of lame talking about this because I'm 25 years old, but um, for me, it was at, um, and this is just one thing I'm thinking, but it was high school at the moment. You know, as I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, I had issues just going through school because it just wasn't for me and I, I had a hard time with it. It's not like I was one of those pothead rebels who was off doing their own thing all day. It was just, I, I, didn't, I didn't like it. And so when I graduated and um, our graduation was in the local um, arena, basically the same place that Madonna and ACDC and Britney Spears have played. We were, that's where we graduated was in that arena and to walk out and see just the vastness of it, it was, it was like, man, that, that, that it was a pretty darn good feeling. Like, man, I, I, I finally did it. 
Um, so I would say that for one, and God, I gotta be honest. Um, I'm sure there are little accomplishments that I'm proud of, but I can't think of anything else that's big. I, I hate to say that because like, damn, I haven't accomplished anything, but you know, working, I guess that's an accomplishment. Uh, and I love what I do, which I'll get to that in a second, but I don't know. I can't think of anything else. <laughs> kind of lame, I know. Hmm. Anyways, next question. Let's have a little fun here. Habla espanol. Ah, si un poco, señor Duane. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, uh, how, do you, how do you say? I don't know. Uh, habla, uh, hablo espanol, uh, uh, pero un poquito. Uh, no... Um, is grande vocabulario, um, you know, but uh, I know un poquito. Um, so, does that answer your question? Um, los a ah, las cucarachas en el burrito es muy delicioso. Also, Donde está la biblioteca? Hmm? Ah, nobody knows. I don't know. So there's your answer. What's it like living in California? I love it. Three hours away, you have the coast. Two hours away, you have Yosemite. Four hours away, you have Los Angeles. Four hours, uh, six hours, maybe eight. You have San Diego. Even six hours away, you have Las Vegas. Three hours away, you have... San Francisco, and probably three, you have Sacramento. I mean, everything is just so close, at least for Fresno. Um, you know, because Fresno is not really that exciting. But that's what I love about California is there's just so much in the area. Um, and it's an easy day's drive. Um, even Las Vegas. Um, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, also, the weather... It's hot during the summer, cold during the winter, and the temperature is kind of in the middle in the months in between. Um, I've never gone through a hurricane, never gone through a tornado. The last earthquake that I have personally felt was approximately 1998. I kid you not. So yeah, I I love it. I know people say, oh, California, because there's all these laws about guns and crap. Everything else, though, it's it's a freaking wonderful state, man. Um, I know it's expensive, so who knows? Maybe I'll end up going somewhere else when I start paying for my own stuff all the time. But um, I, don't, I, I love it. It's a great state. Do you gamble? No, I do not. In the traditional sense, I do not. When I say traditional sense, I mean casino games. Blackjack, roulette, craps, uh, what's the, the, the slots? I don't play those. Uh, not because I don't like to or I'm against it. It's just I don't. Oops. Um, I just don't play. Um, but do I gamble in other ways? Yes. If you look back to the first question, playing the jackpot, I play that from time to time. Um, I don't waste too much money, though, because, well, you know, you may not win, but, you know, it's fun. And taking chances in other ways, yes, I do. Um, but, yeah, so, but in the traditional sense of the word gamble, no, I do not. What's your favorite conspiracy theory? I told Dwayne that I really don't believe any, and so that's why he has the other question below, um, because he asked that the high school graduation speech question um, in replacement of the conspiracy theory question. Because I really don't, I do not believe any. Um, you know, I think Oswald shot JFK and that's the end of it. I don't think he was a Russian spy. I don't think he was a part of the mafia. I don't think he worked with the Cubans. You know, maybe, maybe the Russians influenced him. Maybe the Cubans influenced him, but I don't think he was working for them. Um, you know, I mean, I do like to think Bigfoot exists because that's just fun. Why the heck not? I like to think aliens exist because that's fun. Why the heck not? Um, 
but other things like I just yeah I don't believe conspiracy theories because honestly they're uh, here's the thing my time is not valuable at all <laughs> but when it comes to, and when it comes to conspiracy theories they are not worth my time that tells you what I think about conspiracy theories if they're not even worth my time and even I don't consider my time valuable fill in the blank <laughs> they're just pointless to me so yeah there you go uh, yeah and as I told Dwayne earlier over text or whatever I was saying I'm probably the person the government loves because I just believe everything as they say it and you know I'm not one of those people who listens to Alex Jones info wars and like gets all uppity and like oh my gosh they're doing this oh my god they're doing that just uh, who cares? I'm just doing what they're doing. I'm doing what I'm doing. Just bada boom, bada bing, let it go. All right. I want that quote on my headstone. Bada boom, bada bing, let it go. All right. And let's see where. Oh, last question. Finally, Dwayne. Goodness sake. Uh, what do you do for a living and do you like it? Uh, for one, I do not like it. I love it. I work with children. At local schools, and I've been to probably close to a dozen schools just since September or October. Um, and I go, th there's a couple different programs I'm a part of. Uh, one of them is teaching them safety when they're a bicyclist or a pedestrian. Um, and that's like a little class that we do. And others, I just get called to a school when they don't have anybody. So I'm a substitute, but not for the regular day school, but the after school. So, and I, I love it. I, I love working with kids. I love kind of being that positive influence in their life. Um, and I, you know, if I can just make them smile or laugh, uh, I mean, I I feel like I've done my job for the day. Of course, there's more to it, but I mean, I just, yeah, I, I just, um, uh, I love kind of being that fun uncle to all the kids, even though I maybe never seen them before. I like to kind of have fun with them, but you know, be stern when I can and like, Hey, stop it. Don't do it. Don't nope. So yeah, I, I love it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's fun. And who knows, maybe it'll develop into something more. Uh, but I don't know. Just for now, I love what I'm doing, and that's cool. So, oh my gosh, my throat is dry now. All right, so that are that's all my um, answers. I'm about to go to bed right now. Um, but thank you for all the questions. And again, if you have a question that maybe you didn't see my original video, feel free to leave it down below, and I'll just answer you be a little typey type all right and uh i'll get to you like that all right so thank you again Dwayne, caleb brad and hunter ringo <coughs> Woo, dry throat uh for the questions thank you again and i'll see you guys in the next video adios